following announcement has been paid for by the Jackass Nation. What's up, world? Welcome to another movie review here. It's your boy, ETCW World Heavyweight Champion. No, Craig. Shit. Not just the city, the world. The Jersey Jackass. Hit me up on all social media at RealJackassBC. R-E-L-J-A-C-K-A-S-S-B-C. I am here with the one, the only, the Mad Zach. I would tell you his Twitter, but he changes it every week, so I don't actually know it. Well, currently right now, it is at Cole, C-O-L underscore the Mad Zach. T-H-A-M-A-D-Z-A-K. That's what it is. That's right, because cause he's he spells the weird, but that's all right. It's what's available. Okay, if you want a Twitter handle that's available, don't spell it correctly. That's the way I got it. That's that's true. That's Pro good. tip. Pro tip. Uh, so we're here to talk spoilers for uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah, I didn't, so, I didn't want to talk non-spoilers because that's just like, it's so hard to I kind of is. dance around everything. So... Let's just do a spoilers one. I'm my, about it from the beginning. My, my, my review that I put up was very, very basic. And there goes your phone. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so if you have not seen Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, and on that note, if you have not seen Endgame, we're gonna, it, that has a lot to do with this, too. So if you haven't seen either of those, then you're going to want to get out of here, come back, watch this after you watch the movie. Uh, so that's going to be first, last, only warning. Bada bing, bada boom. You got five, four, three, two, one. You out. All and right, there's so. a watch later, so that's the thing. Go and click watch later, save the episode, and come back. Exactly, exactly. And while you're at it, click the thumbs up too. Spoilers. 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 So, uh, Far From Home, dude. I loved this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I let's so we can go over overall, overall thoughts and kind of go into yeah. nitty gritty from there. Yeah, no, I uh, I was not hyped for this film because. My day job, I'm on the marketing side, and I've actually had a lot of friends that were working with like brands like Frito Lay, mm -hmm. and looking how to integrate Far From Home into like their marketing. And a lot of them read the script, and they were like, "Dude, you don't even know the hot piece of trash this is." And they were like telling me it's bad, and I went in with very low expectations, which worked out for me greatly because it came out, and now it is one of my favorite Spider-Man movies out there. That's awesome. Yes. Uh, but I, I saw your ranking the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, you still have uh, uh, Enter the Spider-Verse, Into the Spider-Verse is number one, though. That's always going to be first. And, you know, we can talk about our final, uh, like, what our final rankings are yeah. at the end of the video. So make sure you guys stick around for that. But yeah, Into the Spider-Verse is just, for me, it is a cinematic gem yeah. that I honestly think... Even on the animation side, it's going to be hard for any time anyone to tackle ever. And then even on the Spider-Man side, um, it's almost like what, for a lot of people, Lego Batman, people are saying it's a, an amazing, one of the best Batman pieces ever. Uh, what Into the Spider-Verse did was just like crush all fandom and expectations and just so many different levels of uh, it being a cinematic masterpiece in my eyes. So yeah, it, to be honest, was Far For Home going to do that? Was it going to beat that? No. But guess what? It beat out a lot of other Spider-Man yeah. movies uh, you wouldn't expect. So make sure you guys stick around to hear our final rankings at the end. But yes, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. They did some things I didn't think they were going to be able to do. And for a sophomore movie, sophomore director coming in, this is not a sophomore slump. This is someone who actually raised the bar going into a second film. And only a few people have been able to do that in general film, not even superhero movies. Uh, I think... I, I on I think I do like Homecoming more than this one. But I, I, I do. But it's not a slump. That's exact. Different. That is true. This is that not nothing goes into this and me going and eh, they they didn't quite hit the beats. It is a great movie. It's so much fun, uh, and the story itself. While the story, like if you know Mysterio, you knew what this was. You knew he was not the good guy. So yeah, let's go ahead and break it down. So we have we have the whole crew back together. Mm -hmm. They're still in high school. They're going to Europe. Simple as that. Yeah. On a summer trip. That, uh, that threw me off. I'm like, I'm like, oh, it's, in, it's a summer trip. Yeah, summer okay. trip. Okay. Uh, this is shortly after Endgame. Mm -hmm. So Iron Man's gone, and Spider-Man is now dealing with the fact that his father figure in his life, his mentor, is now, now gone. And weirdly enough, it was kind of like a... It, he just wants to get to some back, like, back to like being a kid. And I love how they use the plot device of him not just saying, oh, I want to be a kid that's grounded again. He's like, no, I like really like MJ, and this is my chance to do it. And that plot device of 
him wanting to be able to tell MJ how he feels is what carried the story for me and was able to make it like a really good rounded you know teenage rom-com yeah i i completely agree they did they did take that tone of homecoming and kind of build on it and let it keep going it's not as much of a john hughes film but it's like the next step up and we're still moving forward and we're progressing with these characters which is something i really like like you kind of feel like these guys are growing and you're growing with them in like in the in the movie sense of it there. Well, and the funny thing is too, imagine being John Watts of cool. You're gonna do Spider-Man, uh, you know, the sequel to Homecoming. Great. Also, hey man, it's gonna be the end film to this phase. So you know, phase of films. It's gonna be the coming right after Endgame, and you're gonna have to actually tie up a lot of loose ends of one of our biggest movies ever. <laughs> and he's just you're like, gonna have to explain how some kids are five years older. Yeah, that was so. That was a great thing. The movie starts off talking about the blip, and how some kids are five years older than others, and you know some kids stay the same age, and it adds a really interesting dynamic. Now I'm not, you know, I'm sure some people that work in like school districts were like, this is totally screwed up. Like, how do they just start school again? The kids that are five years older are still in the same grade. I. My sister, who's a history teacher, I, I can't wait for her to watch it and just, like, critique that specific part. <laughs> but I thought the way that it opened with, like, the cheesy Avengers, um, you know, like... The montage the for, mo the, for, yeah. the, for the morning... <laughs> and then the guy and the chick doing the fake high school news, because we all had that fake high, yep. that high school news that was kind of BS. Mm -hmm. I hated and it, it, was, so, like, more, it looked, so much. It looked like it was created, like, in, with clip art. And you like, can see like a boom mic that keeps. Yep. <laughs> and it was like it looked like it was created with clip art and like a uh, Microsoft Movie Maker, like some low end Sony Vega stuff, <laughs> and like it was just laughable, but it was almost um, it was really great. So uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a perfect end cap to end game, mm -hmm. and answered a lot of things for us. Um, you know, we're talking a lot of a lot about the positives, but let's just you know let's do the first thing, which should be quick because there's not a lot, but. What are some of the negatives for you? Some of the things I didn't like is is, is a little bit more like like the the story itself. And again, like I said earlier, if you know Mysterio, this story is paint by numbers. I literally I, I told I, I going into it, I expected that I thought I thought, hey, Mysterio's gonna come in, this whole multiverse thing is a lie, it's not true, he's made all this up, he's the bad guy, this is what's gonna happen, and it's exactly that. Right on, right by, right, paint my numbers. And we'll get to the post credit scene later that kind of changes the movie. But for the most part there, the story, it really is, it's just A, B, C, D. You know, you, you yeah. just, there's there's no surprises in the story that really no. pushed anything. And if you made it this far enough in the video, I know you're sitting there waiting. Guys, talk about the post credit scene. Talk about the post credit scene. Just hold on. We'll get there. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's funny. A lot of people. I came back and um, we got to see Avengers Endgame early, and we joked about. I joked about that, like spoiling it for people. So when I got to see this early, I went back to the office, and people are like, "Don't spoil it for us." I was like, "Hey, to be honest, there's nothing to spoil." Yeah. And I'm like, "Hey, let me just ask you this. Do you, do you know who Mysterio is?" They're like, "Yes." I was like, "Do you think he's a bad guy?" And they're like, "Well, of course." And I was like, "Cool, then you're not spoiled <laughs> yeah. at all. At all. There's nothing to worry about except for the two end credit scenes. Mm -hmm. that, those are spoilers. But as for like the film itself, um, I did like Jake Gyllenhaal mm -hmm. as, oh, he was as so Mysterio, good. and I'm I'm really excited that he's in the Spider-Man franchise as a whole because little do people know when Tobey Maguire was injured on the set of Sea Biscuit. Going into Spider-Man 2, Jake Gyllenhaal was his replacement if he did not heal back yeah, enough to, cool. to do that. So, like, to see him into, you know, and Jake Gyllenhaal being talked about for a thousand but, superhero roles, I'm yeah. just glad he's now in that's, somewhere. Honestly, that's another one of my negatives, though. The fact that Marvel does not seem to learn, don't kill your villains. What do you mean? They keep, like, I, I could have sworn that Mysterio was going to survive. Yeah. And he was... Because he's part of the Sinister Six. So, they killed him off. I'm like, why would you... Like, he was so good. Stop killing good villains. I thought they learned with Vulture. No. What what they want is... Um, what, at, honestly, with the way Mysterio is, I think Mysterio could be anybody. I think Mysterio could be 
it's Mysterio is the technology. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, but that Quint, one but yeah, but Jake Gyllenhaal in that role was. I would love to see him come back when Spider Man has to fight the Sinister Six. Yeah, maybe maybe they create Jake Gyllenhaal again in a hologram. So maybe it's not him, but it's a hologram version of him, and the nerdy guy with the computer in the background mm -hmm. is making it look like Jill Hall's back. That's yeah, smart. And literally, he's Mysterio, but yet Jill Hall can come back and reprise that role. And think about that about that mind, you know, screw. Of uh, you saw Jake Jill Hall die, and now you see him again in front of you because mm -hmm. he was mentally prepared after so many like mind trips of Mysterio, which is. Literally the best part of the film for it me. It really is, dude. Like it was, it was almost ripped right out of that '90s animated series. Yes. That scene of him fighting all, like with all that thing changed. That was right out of the animated and it, series. And I don't know about the comics. Did, and, you, ever, did you ever read the? Mysterio yes. Com and, I, and I'll go into it when I go into my positives. But um, are those all your negatives? No, no. Um, okay. And this is a this is a weird negative because I love Zendaya. I think she is incredible. This is this is horrible. That you're I right. love her. Is, you are you are human garbage. I loved her character Michelle in you're the first one. I thought Michelle was a great character. I it was a new person in the Spider-Man universe. I was really excited for this character. Now that she's MJ, I feel like the character that was Michelle disappeared in this movie. She was a lot different in this movie. And right. this is and to me, this is not MJ. MJ's not dark and ooh death and you know something died here blah blah blah. She's not that kind of gothic type of character, you know. And so that's something. And and, and Parker so, never met MJ until college, and so I've always wanted no, that. Yes. No, there's millions of iterations. I know there's through. millions of iterations, but I've always wanted that 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 knowledge of May trying to set Peter up with MJ over and over and over and over, and him always turning it down. And then just that revelation of him opening the door, and yeah. and that line of "Face it, Tiger, you hit the jackpot." You know that iconic that that's an iconic comic panel. I'm not a it comic is. reader, but that is an iconic Spider-Man moment it is. that I have always wanted, and we've never gotten right. I know, but so for me is no, again, I love okay, Zendaya. So, but if you break down MJ as a character, let's break down MJ as a character. Um, what is what what is MJ's character and its essence to you? Because for me, it's just some girl that was slightly out of Peter's league, which I would say Zendaya is. Yes, <laughs> out of out of uh, Peter's league that he, and that's pretty much it. Like what else? What else? To is me, your she is a, she is a strong, sassy, feminine character who is the backbone for Peter. Okay, yeah. That he that he meets after so much tragedy has hit his life, after losing Gwen, uh, after after dealing with all that loss. Yes, he meets her, and she is the one that kind of saves him. So, in, so, in a sense, okay. So, so that's why I just I look at at this character of Michelle, and I loved Michelle. I thought Michelle was a perfect character. So this is, and we can meet MJ. Five, five movies no, down the line, and no, I would have no. been fine with it. So here's the issue. You're not doing Gwen Stacy again. I know, we that can't. Just we couldn't. So if you're saying that something traumatic happens in his life, and then MJ's the one who helps him pick up the pieces and be his backbone, um, what's more traumatic than losing your mentor? I mean, uh, yes, it's true. I just, as a character, I don't feel like this is the uh, this is MJ. But you have not identified... It's it's exactly what no I have no what it, what is MJ? It's multiple things that have gone through in his life, and then he meets. I want I wanted that storyline of May trying to set him up with this girl, and then she just and then and him going no I know she's probably not my type blah 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 and then you get that that introduction of MJ that's that's just what that's how I wanted I wanted that. And we're not gonna. And, and again, it's 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 nitpicky. It's Dude. not a big deal because I love the character. Dude, MJ's trying to. Or sorry. Uh, Aunt May's trying to get her own, her own right now, right? I, uh, yeah. She doesn't have time to focus on Peter, who's an adolescent high school student. She's trying to get hers in. I know. Right now, she doesn't have time uh, to focus on that. And so, my other, I love, I yeah, go, my, other negative. My other negative again is a character thing. Flash Thompson. Flash is that popular, athletic, badass okay. who everyone in school likes, except for Peter because he bullies Peter. You know, and I love Tony Ravioli. He is a great character. He is a great actor. He's so funny. 
I love this this character Flash, but this is not the Flash that I want. I wanted a traditional popular kid bully because Flash kind of feels like an outcast in this. He feels like everyone really hates him because they all kind of make fun of him too. Like even in the first one, when uh, when they're when they're doing their uh, what was it the, the the debate team. The one kid kept hitting the bell and making jokes at Flash's expense. It was funny as hell. I loved it, and I love Flash's return on it. But at the same time, that character doesn't feel like Flash Thompson. Uh, to me. For me, if you just had to say we have had to have a bully character in this, I don't mind it. I like seeing different iterations of mm -hmm. it. I've seen Flash Thompson a thousand times. Yeah, but see, uh, but again, I, I feel I like we've never I, gotten Flash Thompson done properly. We, I, I loved I what they were doing in the Amazing Spider-Man. But then he was gone. I don't need to see it. I've seen Flash Thompson a thousand times, a thousand so. different iterations. I don't care to see it here. I think this is a great spin on. Um, again, again, this character. If this, if this character's name was Jeremy, no, I would. I'd be I like, oh, this is a great character. I, don't mind I love it. it. You even see the little setup that they did with him at the end, adding layers to his character. That his mom, the, his yeah. mom wasn't there mm -hmm. to pick him up to the airport. Yeah, it's I did fun. like that. And and again, again, as a, as another character, I think he's perfect. I think he is a great add to this. For for me, all that needs to be there for Flash is that he's a bully. That he bullies Peter specifically. And he is a part of not necessarily athletic, but he's a part of like the mainstream like mm -hmm. I'm a badass, which in this case is like so, not, social everyone, media. Everyone kinda of makes fun of him. He is, but in the fact of like they don't show social media following, but obviously the guy vlogs and has some kind of following, you know, he's talking about the flash mob. Uh, I do. I, I, I have the Jackass Nation. You know how many people were in there? Absolutely nobody. Yeah. But what I'm saying <laughs> I'm just is kidding. I know y'all are there. But but what I'm saying is like they play to that, but they're adding later layers to the fact that he okay, so he's a bully who bullies Peter. And it's a modern day bully, but on top of that, dude, there I feel like in this third movie they can start showing some really dark stuff happening with Flash, mm -hmm. dude. Let's say his parents like don't give a shit about him, and the, because of that, um, his parents not like loving him or giving a shit is the reason why he fandomizes and idolizes superheroes so much. Spider Man, yeah, to a point where he go, wants to do his own thing, goes into the army yeah. or goes into the Marines, and then. For me, that's enough Flash where I don't worry about it. Um, is that all your negatives? Pretty much. Like, Did you have any? Because um, you don't seem to have any. <laughs> no, no. My, my biggest negative is that it was paint by the numbers. Yeah. Um, my other negative was is that there's the scene of him getting caught on the bus and him waking up in that jail. Like, there's certain plot points that just didn't work for me. It feels like things are cut out. Like, we're missing something. Well, and what they do is that then they try to cover it up with comedy. Like, don't, don't worry about this specific plot point. Let's just cover it up with comedy and fast forward to this. So, I feel like... Like, why did he... Like, he got hit by the train. And then got on the train. And then had to, like, end up in the middle of nowhere. And it was just, like... The plot point was just really strange. And they just covered it up by, with comedy by Happy Hogan. And the guy's mm -hmm. in the jail. And the guy wearing the the mask of the spider dude what was it monkey monkey night monkey night monkey. Night, night monkey mask and it's just that was there were some loose plot points when it comes to that um that was, i like that was i like that mj really did put together that he was spider-man though no i love that i love too. that because because that one of my favorite about amazing spider-man is when gwen's there and spider-man's there and uh uh green goblin's like peter <laughs> Same thing with Vulture. He's like, so you're Spider-Man. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I liked that aspect. So that would be probably pretty much my biggest negative is that it was very paint by the numbers. I don't know how they could have done it in the marketing by, like, I don't know. Oh, I thought this movie marketed perfect. It did, but the issue was But then again, I didn't watch most of them. Here's materials. the thing. I felt like they should have built up the, they should have never made Mysterio look like a hero. Mm-hmm. Maybe what they should have done is not even give him the iconic Mysterio costume and gave him some other, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. costume and the marketing and everything be like, this is this guy from an alternate universe who's here to help us. And then he still has, like, the green smoke and maybe some stuff. Even maybe the fishbowl helmet. But, like, not give him the full Mysterio costume and say, hey, I'm Mysterio. I'm here as a good guy. I that was too on the nose. I feel like they could have built in a plot point because... Even even in uh, Homecoming, they start off with the... It sh starts with, this is Vulture, he's a bad guy. 
But it was still an amazing reveal in the movie when you find out that he's fucking Vulture. Yeah. We all knew he was Vulture. I felt like that was the biggest misstep that we, we got with Homecoming and not this one, is that there was not an amazing reveal that he was a bad guy Mysterio. Like, when they started saying, shut it down, we have the password, I'm like, yeah, I've been waiting for this. Yeah. Like, it was not, like, I felt like it was way and more his, built his up. his expositional Vulture. speech. That exposition was, I was like, okay, this is a little cheesy. Yeah, which, that's the thing, is that they, the dude, they showed you in the first five seconds of Homecoming, this guy's the bad guy, but yet the reveal of him being the bad guy later on was still had, like, weight to it. Mm -hmm. That same reveal was not, it didn't happen here, yeah. and it was ruined because the first thing out of the gate was, like, this is Mysterio, he's a good guy, guys, accept that. And we're all watching it, like, He's not. He's not. And if it is, this is really weird. And someone's like, yeah, no, Mysterio, you're the new Iron Man. I'm like, this is a really weird direction. And I feel like it's a plot point in the movie that will make sense. Yeah. But why are you showing me this in the marketing that the Mysterio is going to be the new Iron Man? Because I already know what's happening. Yeah. Like, that was the biggest missteps for me. But they're nitpicky. Because yeah. The overall story is really, really good. Um, and then we can move on to our plethora of positives. I think we should try to keep it down, you know, keep, yeah. keep the list down. Well, I mean, I think we've already, we've, we've kind of talked about them. Like, like there's, there's, it's hard everything about, about this movie is, is really enjoyable. And like we said, even though we said it's paint by numbers, it's still a fun ride. All right? Like, I can go down to Six Flags, I can ride the Titan over and over and over. I've ridden it before, I know what the ride does, but it's still a fun ride. And don't worry, guys, we're going to get to those post credit scenes. Yes. <laughs> right after we talk about our positive, we're going to get to those post credit scenes. So, and I, I loved the costumes. I love when he built... Uh, basically, this costume right here. <laughs> oh, and it was dope to see like the other costumes that Tony had mocked up for. Him. Uh huh. One was like a straight up Iron Man suit. Yeah. With like some spider features, and then you know there's a bunch of different suits. I, I can't wait to actually get the movie on Blu-ray, like freeze frame it, mm -hmm. look at them, break them down. Um, that whole scene. So that was a huge positive for me. Let's. I'm my number one positive is the Mysterio scenes, but my second positive. Um would be the relationship between Happy Hogan and Peter Parker. Yes. And specifically the scenes of, like... But I, I, I see problems with that, though. Why? Because you have that, that relationship, that mentor kind of relationship that, you know, hey, you lost Tony, and now I'm here for you. But I feel like at some point we also have to address that Tony's daughter is... Happy's there for Tony's daughter, too. So I feel like it's almost going to be mirroring each he, other. He's everybody's daddy. He's everybody's daddy. He's everybody's baby daddy. He's got to help them all out. That's like, it's, he's, that's literally what he's done. Like, think about it. If, that's true. He like, is. Think, right? of, think about if, like, your best friend died, what would you do for that person? You're going to step in that role mm -hmm. and try to, like, help out all yeah. his loose ends as much as you can. And it's fine. I, you're, you're implicating that we're going to get some kind of, Junior Ironheart baby Iron Man movie. I don't soon. think we like, are, but I, I, I like think at some point that. we need something with that. I, I don't know. Maybe we don't. Maybe, no, maybe we don't. I'm just. She's a little girl growing up. Expect it. Maybe I'm just living in that world too much. And I was, yeah, <laughs> Think, I'm, thinking if I'm in this world, shouldn't you be taking care of his, helping with his daughter right now? Like, <laughs> no, but dude, but you're missing out. Happy Hogan has got to get his with mm. Aunt May. That was a great scene of them talking about, like, what is this relationship? And Happy Elkin thinks it's, like, something serious. And she's like, no. Dude, and then Aunt May, Aunt May, woo, you're a floozy doozy girl. You're just like, it's a Yo. summer fling. And I was like, dang, Aunt May. Look, look. Aunt, Aunt May, Aunt you got game. She's just like, Aunt you're Bae. one of five guys. Yo, I Aunt, Aunt Bay ain't trying to get held down. Aunt Bay, Aunt, Aunt Bay ain't trying to get held down. So, uh. She's like, dude. Ben Parker, those are some big shoes to fill. <laughs> um, I actually don't... I don't like the fact that they basically replaced Ben Parker with Iron Man. Like, dude, the only thing we get talked about... Which I know, I know it's repeated. No, perfectly fine. I don't need to see Uncle Ben die again. No, I, I mean, don't, nothing. I don't, I don't, the one little line that they gave us, everything that May's been through... When and then the when you can do the things that I can do and the, and you don't and then the bad stuff happens you're responsible. That was enough to let me know I get it. It's important. I get it. Thank you. You did it right. Now and then they have the Matt Reeves learn from that. That was some shade. I'm sorry. I don't want to see the freaking Waynes die again either. 
I don't think he'll do it. I think he will. Zack Snyder did it perfectly. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. I did not need to see that. I wanted it to was see a it. waste. I wanted to see it in 4K slow-mo, and I loved it. Thank you, Zack Snyder. <laughs> I remember sitting... Thank you so much, Clive Owen. I walked in. I was so excited. I was like, all right. Batman v Superman. Are they killing the Waynes? Is this the Waynes again? Do I the, have to watch the, title the opening scene? It, the very beginning. I'm like, I'm watching these fucktards die again. It was just a recap. Some people don't know, but you see... Oh, my God. Do, shut up. Everybody knows that Uncle Ben and the Waynes are dead. No. Those are the two that... If my mother knows it... Everyone knows it, and my mother knows. Krypton blew up. That's like that's like opening up uh, uh, S Scrooge <laughs> to begin with. Jacob Marley was dead. Yes, the Waynes are dead. We get it. <laughs> yeah. Second positive. <laughs> Mysterio sequences, amazingly pulled off. Yeah. Literally kept me into the film, and I'm glad John Watts was comfortable enough with these action scenes because I felt like. He was not comfortable enough with these action scenes in Homecoming. That's why there wasn't a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that he was more comfortable directing these these action scenes in the second one and, and took them to a whole new level. And did this is job. a good example of taking action from the first film, ramping it up, but not going, not jumping the shark, not going too far with it. Well, him and John, so there's a parallel. Mark Webb, mm -hmm. who did the Amazing Spider-Man series, and John Watts, both came from similar backgrounds. Yeah. Not traditional superhero movies, more romantic, like, human uh, story pieces. And then he did The Amazing Spider-Man, Mark Webb did, and did an okay job. And then he's like, I'm going to kick up the action sequences because i got to set up for Sinister Six. I'm going to kick it up this next movie. And ruined it. Mm -hmm. This guy, John Watts, did, had the same task. Second movie, you got to kick this up. You're at the end of Endgame, you got to kick up the action sequences. Spider-Man's got to have his... You know, it's Peter Tingle. You got to do it all. And I wish at some point they would have said Spidey Sense. That's yes. another negative. Yes, he should. Oh, they had to do it just like in Iron Man, where finally at the end, Coulson goes, "Just call a shield." Yeah. All he had to do uh, to Spider Sense. <laughs> yes. Not the Peter Tingle. The Peter Tingle joke was okay. It did until drag it on. went too long. It did drag on a little hard. Um, so those are a lot of my positives. Uh, every character I thought executed on the character perfectly. I like JB Smooth. I like the teachers. I liked I like Zendaya. No, I do wish I I I I did miss Hannibal Burris. I said that to you walking yeah. out. And it's nothing against JB Smooth. I'm fine with him. I think he's good. I love but Smith. Hannibal Burris is one of my favorite character actors. Yeah. And I just I love that. No, it was, <laughs> it was a mind it was a like a messed up my mind because Zendaya in real life went and got like straight red hair. So I'm like, oh, by the end of the movie, she's going to have MJ straight red hair and just like, I changed my look. Yeah. Which is cheesy as that sounds. I would have been okay with mm -hmm. That did not happen. Yeah. So the actress literally has the hair she should have in the movie in real life, but not in the movie. <laughs> Talking about lockers. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care for that. Like, eventually I'd like her to have red hair. Is, I, that, I, is it necessary? No, it's not. No, it's not. Is it nitpicky for me? Sure it is. And then, um... Yeah, that's pretty much a lot of my positives. Talking about, and then they finally swing together, where he swings with MJ, leading into the post credits. Uh huh. Now we're getting to the post credits, but I thought it was funny, like how she was scared. Yeah. yeah and like swinging with Spider Man should not be an enjoyable experience. No. Like I felt like in Aladdin, like Jasmine should not be singing on top of a <laughs> flying carpet. carpet. I feel like it should have been like that, where she's gripping the side of the carpet and going like, "Oh my God!" Just like I felt like that's how it should be, but Disney magic's Disney magic, and I'm glad they didn't apply that Disney magic to the web swinging. But she's like, "All right, that was cool." Never again. Never again. Put me down. We're good to go. And so it might be cool, like in the third movie, if they come back to that, and he's got to grab her and save her from an exploding building, and she's like, "Crap, Stop it. crap." Okay, <laughs> yes, grab me. I guess only because I am in a burning freaking building can you now web swing me. Um, and then it leads, they get done with their famous, you know, the nice little web swing. She's got his nice black suit, which we absolutely love. He, well, it's, real quickly, he personally designed, which mm -hmm. that's where I love. That little Iron Man moment of him designing Working it the together. Suit. And you see it in Happy, of Happy seeing that. And seeing that moment of him basically being Tony Stark. 
That was a that was a great moment. I know they're like you're about to get them credit scene, and I then know. now you want to talk about suit. Yeah, I want to talk about the suit. That was amazing. That was a great moment in which they're showing him being like the future Iron Man mm-hmm. when he turns and has the gauntlet and looks at Happy and Happy's just smiling like, dude, you are the new Iron Man, and I think that was setting in stone that he is going to be the leader of the Avengers going forward. Well, and it was great, I, I, and I also think it's it's very telling that Marvel and Sony have already struck up a new deal. One of the best lines too. Tony was a mess. He second-guessed everything that he did. The one thing he did not second-guess was you. That line was so powerful for Mm -hmm. me of, like... Isn't it amazing that they have really built that relationship in just Civil War, the few interactions in Homecoming, Infinity War, and Endgame, that that relationship built so strongly? Because other than Homecoming... Parker's barely in the other two. You know? I mean, he's got a good little arc in Infinity War, but still. But that relate you felt that relationship. Well, it, you felt that relationship, too, um, in Homecoming, even that one scene built up a lot. But then, too, in Endgame, where he's done. He's done with the superhero game. He doesn't want to help them time travel. Nope. He freaking figured out time travel, and yet he's like, I'm good, I'm still not going to help them. And what it takes is him washing off a picture of Peter and him, and that's what triggers it. That shows you how powerful yeah. that is. Because he has Morgan. He doesn't need anything else. He no. has his family, he has his cabin, he's good. But yet the one thing that wrecks his perfect world is knowing that Peter is gone. And that one scene, that one instance, is what like, drives us as fans to understand how important Peter was to Tony, which builds all that up in a short amount of time. Yeah. It was a great plot device. Uh, and we're going to talk about end credit scenes now. I think we're done. Uh, it was good. <laughs> See y'all. Oh, yeah, we're not going to talk about them. <laughs> Bye. No, uh, and, okay. no end credits. And, all right, the, fir- the smallest part of the end credit was actually my favorite part. And you did not mark out as much as I did. As soon as we see J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson, I... Lost it. No, he literally stood up in the theater and just was like yelling at the top of his lungs, and they all lost it. I was losing it in here. I look at like, you, and you're looking at me like I was crazy. I'm like, that's that's J.K. Simmons. I I felt like I just knew it had to happen. Like, okay, so here's. The- I really thought the rumors of uh, Ice Cube were a possibility. No, if there wasn't so much talk around him being. Coming back as J.K. And I didn't hear any talk about that. I well, heard nothing. It was around. It was around the Amazing Spider-Man era. Okay. And so I just assumed it was going to happen. For- and, but then he became Gordon, uh, Commissioner Gordon, and I was like, all right, well, that's it. No, I saw the news of possibilities when I saw it. I was like, okay, I saw this coming. And I love that it's basically the the PS4 version of J.K. J- yeah. J. Jonah. Which that shows you how great that video game is. A lot of homages to that game. A lot of the selfie. The selfie yeah, I felt selfie. like was one of the biggest homages to that video game is him mm-hmm. taking the selfie because that's a huge part of the game. And it's so funny too. Um, I, I work in video games full time and we talk about that one video game of like, dude, why can't people, why can't studios do what they did with that one video game of Spider Man? They just can't. That game was really great. But, um, no, I marked out. It was great. He's like, Spider-Man's a menace, blah, 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 blah. But the footage they revealed, that was something else. Yeah. Walk me through that footage. Cause- so it, it clips up there. They show Mysterio recording something, saying that he's dead. He's like, hey, I'm not going to make it. Something's gone wrong. Spider-Man's behind all this. He said, if he's if anyone's going to be the next Iron Man, it's going to be him. I think he's going to kill me. I don't think I'm going to survive. I've got to let y'all know. Spider-Man is Peter Parker. Well, and then the other thing was, is that the code in which the AI told him to say, like, to confirm to shut down, mm-hmm. Mysterio set that up. Oh, he yeah. goes, do you want me, like, do you want me to, what was it? Execute all something. Yeah, do you want me to execute all the protocols? Yeah. And he goes, yes, execute them all. Execute all of them. And so, like, the, I believe that Mysterio set up that wordage within the AI. It all had to go when he goes, he goes, they'll see what I want them to see. Yeah. And so he said, execute them all, which I thought was an amazing commentary on today's, like, media and news. Everything is what they want them to see. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sorry, if you only watch conservative news, you're getting half the story. If you only watch liberal news, you're getting half the story. Like, 
That's just the way the world works and media works. You're going to show it to the way of what you like. So that commentary of Mysterio brought it full circle for me of not just random D villains that worked, you know, with yeah. o like Slate, like with Obsidian and like worked in the shop of all these background Marvel films getting together to make Mysterio. It was a huge commentary on like how the power of media works and they like edited it to basically say uh, Spider-Man's a villain now he's on the run. Which, in the comics, usually what happens after Civil War, he reveals his identity, and then everyone knows his identity is after May, and now he's on the run. Everyone else is on the run after Civil War because he switches sides between Iron Man and Cap, which yeah. makes him wanted. Yeah. So they are doing that, which is really cool. They make him a wanted villain, which it's funny. In the comics, when he's wanted, you know what happens to him? He's like, I'm a wanted man. I have to like dress down. He goes and gets his black suit. Which is kind of the one he... Oh, you mean the, the, the symbiote? He gets... So he had the symbiote, but even after he got rid of Venom and the symbiote, he had just like a regular black cloth suit. Oh, I didn't know that. And he puts on the regular black cloth suit. It's called Back in Black. It's a graphic novel about this thick. It's amazing. That's awesome. Where Kingpin knows who he is, and Kingpin goes after Aunt May. And then finally what happens is... Aunt, no, hold on. Guys, this comic's amazing. He... Tries his hitmen try to take out Aunt May, he kills all of them. Like, he kills them because he is now like a one man, is super dark. He kills the guys. Then, what happens is King Pay, uh, Kingpin's still in prison because he's Kingpin, he can do everything from prison. Yeah, Spider Man drops down in the black suit in the middle of the yard of the prison, rips off his mask, and just goes, Let's go. And it is a almost 12 page epic fisticuffs brawl. Between really? Spider-Man and Kingpin. And Spider-Man has nothing to lose. Everyone knows his identity. Kingpin's already trying to kill his family. He has nothing to lose. And they go fist to cuffs. And is one of the greatest panels of comics ever. So what? basically what they're setting up, just like how they set up Civil War. And I was like, I hope they pull off Civil War. Great, they did. Now they're kind of pulling off this Spider-Man wanted stuff. Yeah. Obviously they're not going to have Kingpin, which, oh my gosh. Could they you could. Imagine, could you imagine could. Tom Holland going fisticuffs with, with Kingpin? With, with D'Onofrio? Yes. Oh, my gosh. It'd be great, but it's not going to happen. But they are... I'm not going to... I, I, I will never say never. All right? The fact that they're bringing... That, that, that Kevin Feige is bringing back a character from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they're bringing back Ghost Rider. The fact that Kevin Feige put a character from uh, Agent Carter in Endgame, uh, Jarvis. Yeah. The same actor... I am no longer... Say, I'm never going to say never. It is a possibility. D'Onofrio has said, I totally want to be in a Spider-Man movie. And that is a perfect fit. Now, you want me to mark out. You want me to mark out showing him in the end credit scene. I would have thrown everyone's... Yeah. I would have personally picked up your food, thrown it up in the air, ripped off my clothes, and <laughs> set fire to the fucking theater. <laughs> if you... If you it, that's if you would have shown Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin in the end of him even bumping into Peter or something. Yeah, I would have lost it. You don't understand? Uh, like, maybe that's what they do at the end of the third movie. Yeah. I honestly do think they're introduce symbiote in the third movie. Yeah, I do too. And then you have the second end credit scene because I think we've talked about yeah. this one enough. Uh, we find out that this whole time, this whole this whole movie, uh, Hill and and. Uh, uh, Fury are scrolls. Yeah, and it's scrolls from Captain Marvel. It's uh, what's his face? Uh, oh man, now I can't think of his damn name. Go, go, go on. I'll look it up real quick. But I think it's funny that was it. I uh, I joke around with my daughter. I told her I was like, for Endgame, I told her all these Endgame spoilers. I was like, you want to mess with people, tell them these Endgame spoilers. And she did. She ruined the movie for a lot of people. <laughs> and so for this one, I said, uh, Bobby, Ben Mendelsohn. Ben Mendelsohn. No, but Tal Talon. Talos. Okay, I thought, you, I thought you meant no, the actors. No, no, no. I know Ben Talos. Talos. Um, but I said, you want to ruin this movie for everyone? Just walk around and be like, like if a waiter comes and brings you food and your food's wrong, be like, this food's wrong. Also, do you want me to ruin Spider Man for you? <laughs> do you want me to do it? They're all scrolls. They're all scrolls. They're all scrolls. Scrolls, scrolls, scrolls. So, which is weird because we talked about it because scrolls are supposed to be villains that infiltrate the Avengers, mm -hmm. and some of them are scrolls for 10, 20 years. And in Captain Marvel, we were dead set on those were the villains. The and scrolls not. were the villains, and they were not. Uh, and they, is, do you think that's a big misstep? No. I thought it was great. I thought it was a good way to look at it. 
No, I think it's huge. Like No, I think you can bring in the Super Scrolls and let those be the villains. You know, because because I, I like the way they flipped everything, um, and, and I loved I loved the idea that, you know, when even when he mentions Captain Marvel, he uh, Scroll yes. Fury's like, don't say that name, and you don't reckon you don't no. realize it. And then I didn't realize it either. He scratches his eye patch because it's not supposed to be there. That's the fun thing about this film is you go back and you rewatch like all of the instances that told there were scrolls. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm actually excited to watch it again because yeah. of that. But this is my biggest thing is. Okay, name other iconic Avenger villains. I felt like Scrolls was the natural next villain to go to. Oh no, the the natural next. Are villain. you saying Kang? No. Who? Doctor Doom. He's not an Avengers. Villain. He will be. Doctor Doom will be. I I guarantee. Our next go to. Our next big bad. Is Doctor is Doctor Doom. Doom. No. Our next our next Thanos. Not maybe not the next Avenger movie. But our next build up to is going to be Doctor Doom. I think because of the and look, don't get me wrong. I don't think Doctor Doom's that big of a badass, but the movie world seems to always think he is. I think what they're doing is they're building up to because now the scrolls are the good guys hanging out with Nick Fury, building a big old ship. Um, I think they're building up to a Nihilus, and they're gonna have. The Fantastic Four introduced, and they'll be the main figures in the next Avengers film. And it's going to be a Nihilus coming to, from the Negative Zone, coming to kill everyone. And the Scrolls, which might be Sword, is going to help stop a Nihilus. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask. Was like, what do you think they are building there? I, I think, think they're building sword. sword. Sword, not Shield, which I'm great. Um, I'm glad that the Agents of Shield movie or show didn't uh, take the name Sword. I felt like they've been planning for a version of Sword for the movie, so I feel like this is it. Yeah. And if you have another cosmic being, you only have you have three. You have Annihilus, which is very, very understandable. Giant bug guy with giant bug army. Cool. Which would be horrible because now you just have another Thanos type with a big army attacking Earth. You have Galactus, which is a giant cyclone just heading to Earth. Or a giant guy with a purple helmet, you pick. And then you have um, Kang, the Time Conqueror. Yeah. Which they could do because they've messed with time now. Mm -hmm. They've messed with time. Kang could be like, you guys mess up with time, and I'm here to set it right. I'm a villain. Let's go. I think I think we're building. Here's what we're going to do. Or Ultron again. I, I, th <laughs> I don't think we're going to Ultron again. I think Doctor Doom will be our number one. All right, I think he will be our our, our real because because you can ground it a little more even though we want to go into space. But I think before that we'll have another Civil War esque type of movie. Of one of the Avenger movies will be Avengers vs X Men. Oh, and I think you have can, they even addressed how they're going to do X Men and in... when Rocket says it when Thanos snapped his fingers, Earth became ground ground zero for the biggest cosmic entity that has ever happened. Well, they then did it two more times. So you have now had the biggest cosmic energy blast to Earth three times. That's going to mess things up. Mm. I think that is what sets off the mutant X gene, but it's going to take time to manifest. What if they just kept them as inhumans? What if Wolverine now is inhuman? What if Jean is inhuman? Why, why muddy the waters with the word mutant? Why don't they just keep their whole inhuman thing going forward? Because they, it's awful. they only use the Inhumans on a really bad television yeah. show and Shield. Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, but that's what Marvel is planning for. They're planning not to have mutants ever. That's why they were trying to yeah. move the whole. Hindu. See, but but one now that you got mutants, you're gonna they're gonna do it right. The issue is now, um, Wolverine will not exist back in the 1950s. He still can. You can still have people that had powers, but just kind of hid it. You know, like maybe a couple of the mutants. So got you're saying, through. so you're saying the mutant gene always existed. Yeah. Because just like we, you can, you can keep it. Just it just never manifested in a lot of people, dude. You're and gonna now have to, you're gonna have to write the sh stuff out of this, dude. Marvel, Mar look, just like they did with Marvel, just like they did with the blip. All right, they 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 showed you what's going on in three minutes. Like, all right, here you go. You got it. All right, we're good. Let's go. You know that they can do that. They're fine. 
You know, I, I, I'm not we'll worried see. about that at all. We'll you see. can have certain mutants that have broken through and manifested over years. You know, and then you can have now ev a lot more are starting to manifest. So here's my thing: is that what they can do is start the whole mutant thing now, and but with this timeline, we're never going to get to classic Xavier and Magneto unless they just appear now and start their feud and all that ties in. But I feel like they're gonna wash all that away and just be like, "Their mutants are here. Let's just move on." I think they will too. Let's be weird, and it's like. Oh, this is Professor X. He raises them. Do you have an arch villain named Magneto? Well, no, that doesn't fit into this timeline. I don't have an arch villain named Magneto. I have a friend named Eric. I do. He I doesn't did. really agree with my methods. Methods. Have you guys been battling for decades? Well, no, we're still friends. And it's like, okay, I guess that's where we're at. And they're never going to retell the stories because there's no need to just like. The Waynes are dead. The we Waynes get are dead. it. Ben Parker's dead. Magneto and Xavier hate each other. We understand all of this now, so it's fine. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, though, if we're going to talk about our list, let's talk about our list. And number one's Into the Spider-Verse. Nothing's going to beat that for me for a long time. We'll see how the third Spider-Man goes, but if third Spider-Mans are ever tracked, this one will be not that great. <laughs> uh, Into the Spider-Verse, number one. Spider-Man 2 is still my second. That movie's amazing. Um, there are some people... Uh, who's that guy that we know... That loves La La Land. Who's on Collider? Oh, uh, Mance? Mance. Mance put Far From Home above Spider-Man 2. Really? Yes, he did. I do not do that. Um, I do Spider-Man 2, which is still with Doc Ock. Still amazing. Far From Home 3rd. Homecoming 4th. Amazing Spider-Man 7th. I still love the first Amazing Spider-Man. It's a great, yeah. great movie. Um, Spider-Man 1 and 3 are 6 and 7. And then Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the worst... The worst Spider-Man movie, and one of the worst movies ever made. Wow, Amazing Two is the worst one. Of the worst movies ever made, really. I there's there's. A I long, went. Long... I still I still have Homecoming as number one. I loved Spider-Man Homecoming. This is the quintessential Spider-Man for me. I love him. He is perfect. Uh, it is. Inc it's just he's he's Peter Parker and Spider-Man together, and it's the first time I really go. Yeah, like you know, Tobey Maguire. Great '60s Spider-Man, great '60s Peter Parker, but that's it. Didn't really fit. Okay. Uh, amazing, great Spider-Man, terrible Peter Parker. Way too cool. Just way, way too cool. Like he was just <laughs> too cool of a dude. Uh, so, so that's why. I, but that's why. And, and plus, Michael Keaton. Like I can't get over how cool Michael Keaton is. No, Michael as the Vulture. So. That's literally, to be honest, that carries that film. Yeah, volumes. Is my uh, into the Spider Verse second though, and those are they're yeah like you can't even get that line any thinner because it's so damn good and so entertaining. I right now have Spider Man two at three. Right now, now I'm gonna have to see Far From Home a few more times before I can officially say if I like it more than I like Spider Man two. Okay, and then Far From Home's right there at number four. Uh, then the first original Spider Man I put at number five. Because I love that. And Boonsaw is ready. I put Amazing at number six. And I know, like, like okay, I, I kind of scoffed at the idea that you said Amazing Spider-Man 2 is bad. I actually really enjoy it. It has issues, don't get me wrong. Rhino's one of my all-time favorite characters, and that was atrocious. What about Electro? I loved Electro. What? Uh, uh, San is Sans, is that the right word? Is that after? I'm down. Sans uh, I'm done. is after? No, I'm done with this. After he's no longer Edward Nigma and he's actually just Electro, I loved him. Now, when he was Edward Nigma. Edward Nigma is the Riddler. What are you talking about? I know. You don't get my reference to I Batman? I do. It's to, just, to Jim Carrey's but that's Batman awful. Forever. It is, but it's awful. It was, it, was, it was terrible. I did not like that. Oh, so how does his suit appear? I, th look. I am. I will not. I will not fight you to say that there are not stupid things. And every and I watch that movie a lot. I do. I watch it a lot. And I always sit there and go, "Where do you get a suit?" <laughs> I, so Dane DeHaan is not bad in that movie. Mm -hmm. I love Dane DeHaan. And and I and one of and I I will. The scene where we lose Gwen Stacy is, I think the. One of the best Spider-Man scenes ever made. It's good. 
and it's in one of it's in it's in one of the worst movies. That's the, the, the my two favorite Spider-Man scenes are in the two worst movies. Because Spider-Man Three, which is an atrocious movie, which I have last, but has one of my all-time favorite scenes. What? And that's when that bell's ringing and he's ripping off the suit. I think that was done. That was the most perfect uh, scene I've seen. I just hope that I, that's why I hope the symbiote is in the third movie, mm -hmm. and we can get all those iconic scenes in that, and we don't yeah. have to remember that. But do you think what are the likely chances that it is now that Venom's so successful? I don't think we'll get it. Well, Kevin Feige did say that uh, he predicts that at some point we are going to see the crossover with Venom and Spider-Man. Good. Tom Hardy's Venom. And Dude, Tom Hardy and Tom Holland. Mm -hmm. The Toms. I'm getting I, double Toms. I I I I. I and I wonder how we do it now that we have Venom on his own story and how he became himself. I wonder how we get that hatred for Peter and, you know? Cause what what if he wants a new break and goes to New York? That's that's where you get it, is the regular sequence of... What, Venom leaves Eddie? No, 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 it stays with the... Oh, uh, you're right. That's that's what I'm thinking, is, is I don't know how you get that. No, no, yeah. And Ven again, no, the Ven reason... No, the Ven Venom thinks he's a better host. Venom thinks that maybe Spider-Man's a better host. See, and, and again, the reason I think... Or something happens to Eddie where he's knocked yeah. out and the symbiote needs to leave Eddie for a while. And again, look, like I said, the reason I am... I Spider-Man's my all-time favorite hero. We did we did our favorite hero list a couple couple like a year ago on it is what it is spider-man is my number one favorite hero of all time i've always related to him he has always been my favorite but the actual reason behind him being my favorite other than the fact that i related to a kid that was got to be a superhero was venom is my favorite character him and darth vader are my two favorite characters of all time but now, does it necessarily need to be Venom that attaches it to Peter? Why not just another symbiote? True, it could be. But then again, why does it make? Uh, I mean, I mean, it could be. It could be any Venom. No, I, know, I, I do I, actually. I actually do believe it needs to be Venom that attaches be, himself because to Peter. Because the reason, the reason, because I Venom needs a website. <laughs> yeah, Venom. Venom hates Peter, or Venom hates Spider Man because Spider Man rejected him. Eddie hates Peter. Because Peter got him fired. And so when they combined, he got that information, Peter is Spider-Man. We both hate the same person. We will work together. We will be Venom. And we will take down Spider-Man. So that's that's the only problem I've ever had with that. And again, there are times that, yeah, they will work together and they get it. And I've heard a good idea of how they bring it in is Venom goes too out of hand when he has to fight Carnage. And that's what brings Peter to San Francisco to deal with this. And that's how you get the crossover. I can see but, it. Well, tell, tell me what you guys think of Far From Home. Love to hear it. All right. Uh, hey, Zach, put yourself over as well. Let everyone know where they can find you, what you have going on, all that stuff. Um, you guys can find me uh, on Twitter, at Cole the Mad Zach. Um, if you guys want to follow the work that I'm doing right now, um, might have some interesting news on some stuff that BC and I are working on. Stay tuned for that, because Shane just got a house in the colony, and uh, we might have that. we might have some new shows popping up. But right now, most of my work you guys can find at Complexity Gaming. If you guys go to Complexity Gaming on YouTube, that's right now where a lot of my work is right now. Uh, you can find me uh, Friday night. I will be at VIP Wrestling. Uh, uh, Crime Time is back. So come check out Crime Time. So I'll definitely be hanging out there. Uh, UEW in California on Saturday the 6th. Meeting Jay Washington for his debut back in the ring. ETCW Declaration on July 13th. And of course, San Diego Comic Con is coming up. So we'll have all the news for you oh, on Cinelinks.com. You got this That's right. Thing. Got my badge. It showed up. It's so damn cool. Oh wait, where's the badge? It's in there. Oh great. Yeah. Uh, so make sure you're checking that out. And on July 20th, it is the Schmodown Inner Geekdom Championship. If you haven't seen the collision, minor spoilers. Uh, we have our winner. It will be Rachel the, Cook, the Crusher Cushing taking on Mike Kalinowski. Get your tickets now at SchmodownLive.com. It smells like a brand new Pokemon card. I know it's amazing. It's a all right. Well, it's comic. Great show. So, great video. Make sure you're See there. You guys later.
I'm just gonna take this. Don't don't even think about just, it. I'm just gonna take this. Follow me on all social media at Real Jack SBC. R E L J A C K A S S B C. Hit the hit the thumbs up. Comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the uh, of the, of Spider Man Far From Home. Let us know. Share this video around. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell to get notifications. And we will see y'all next time. I'll take this. Proceeding announcement has been paid for by the Jackass Nation.